my grandma's cookies are better than yours. No tours with Dick to see the dugouts. It's because my family's been falling for scams since at least 1877. Imagine seventh grade. I know, you don't want to. It's such an awkward year. You're 13, maybe 12. Your complexion is staging this full-blown rebellion. The other kids are all edges and elbows. But let's say you have a teacher with a flair for the creative. Gather round, class, your maternal grandmother. That's your mom's mom. Do you know her first name? I want you all to seat yourselves alphabetically by that. If it was Alice, you're in the front. If it was Zelda, you're in the back. Shuffle it up. Let's go. There's a buzz in the room. It's almost as exciting as Harry Potter's sorting hat. The kids begin to sort themselves into rows while they keep up a steady banter. My grandma's cookies are better than yours. So what? And as they jostle and joke, you burst into tears because it feels like you're the only person in this classroom without living grandparents and you realize that not only do you not know what kind of cookies your maternal grandmother used to make, you don't even know her name. This is how my cousin Melody first became interested in family history. There in her seventh grade classroom, thinking about her grandmother and wondering where to sit. She had a million questions she wished she could ask this unknown lady with the unknown name. So Melody went home that day and just started asking her parents questions about their parents. Melody's mother told her that her grandmother's name was Sina Bell Carver. Her mother remembered spending a lot of time playing outside as a child, running wild, as she called it. And she didn't remember any specific cookie memories, but she did remember that sometimes she would get in trouble and then she would have to sit on the stairs, sort of a timeout, old fashioned timeout. But then Sina would feel bad about it afterwards and give her ice cream. Sina was my father's sister, and Dad said that she was named after his father's former girlfriend. Now, why did Grandma go for that? I mean, it's a pretty name, but his former girlfriend? Sina Bell's brothers used to kid her about her name. When Congress sends a bill to the president, what do they want him to do? Sign a bill. <laughs> <laughs> Future tellers of dad jokes right there. But Dad claimed they were very loving about this because you couldn't help but love Sister Sina. She was little and sweet and gentle and kind. Sina and her siblings were all born in Nebraska, where her ancestors moved in hopes of rich farmland and a fresh start. Back in 1877, her father's Carper family came from Wisconsin with a group of other settlers to form a small town called Mars. Her mother's Hubbard family came from Vermont to settle in a nearby village called Venus. These towns are kind of hard to find now. If you pull up Google Maps, you can see Venus. It's part of Walnut Grove. And then Mars Campground is a few miles southeast of that. And that's most of Mars right there. Our shirt tail relative Dick Haskin lives there on the old Haskin homestead. And this is right near where the old Carver homestead used to be. Dick hosts family reunions there, and many Carver and Hubbard family members have been back to visit. I haven't been to one of these reunions yet because I'm just not a very good traveler, but the last few years I've gotten better at traveling. At the Mars campground, Dick gives tours, and I'm kind of excited about this because there are these dugouts that my great uncles stayed in while they built the house for the family to live in. We have usually these dugouts, they weren't permanent structure. And it seems like everybody's seen these except me. So, to speed things up, a few months ago, I sign up for the special airline credit card from Bank of America. It claims to get me extra airline points so I can fly places for free. The card comes in the mail. And then, two days later, I get a letter from Bank of America. It says, we're shutting down your account due to suspicious activity. And I'm like, what? The letter says I have 25 days to sort this out or else, poof. And I'm thinking, goodbye airline points. No free trips to Nebraska. No tours with Dick to see the dugouts unless I make this call. I call the number on the letter and get a recording that says, if you're over 50, press 1. If you're under 50, press 2. That seems really weird, but I press 1. 
A woman answers. She doesn't say anything about suspicious activity or credit cards. Instead, she tries to sell me a medic alert bracelet. Help, I've fallen for a scam and I just need to hang up. But I guess I shouldn't be surprised because my family's been falling for scams since at least 1877 when those Carver great-grandparents migrated to Mars. Here's an article from the Nilai Independent from January 1878. The editor recounts a trip to the area to visit a homestead. He says the grass rivals Kentucky bluegrass, perfect for fattening cattle, splendid groves of trees, fine meadowlands, four tons of hay per acre, many others to be had in this immediate neighborhood. I wonder what kind of commission this guy got for each homestead that was settled. I showed this to Dick Haskin. He laughed and said, this soil is sand, gravel, and volcanic ash. Nothing grows well here. Nothing. So, back in Wisconsin, some excitable farmer reads a glowing article like this, and then he goes around to his relatives and neighbors and gets them all worked up about Nebraska. Free land, tons of hay per acre, fat cattle, and they all get scammed into moving to Mars together. The article goes on to mention several homesteaders, including Wallace Haskin and Mr. Carver. The Mr. Carver in this article was Sina's grandpa. That's Melody's two times great-grandpa. And despite the bad soil, he did figure out how to scrape a living out of his homestead. But it appears that it was a constant scrape. We know a few things about Cyrus Carver and his wife, Mary, from old newspapers. We know that in Mars, they were called Grandma and Grandpa Carver, that sometimes they were called out in the middle of the night to help care for the sick, and that he donated part of his land to be the first cemetery. These old newspapers weren't available for Melody to search back in seventh grade. They've been scanned in recent years and put online, some of them just in the last couple of years. And when Melody was in seventh grade, we also didn't know each other. I was aware of her mom, but really only as a name on a piece of paper. And sometimes with family history, that's really all you have to start out with is a name on a page. And for some people, it seems like that's the whole goal. A collection of as many connected names as possible, going back as far as possible, and maybe highlighting as many connections to famous people as possible. But we're still trying to understand just a few people a couple of generations back. And honestly, we want to know a lot more than just a name on a page.